Hi, everyone. In this video, I'm going to talk about order statistics. And in particular, I'm going to talk about a fast and easy implementation method. Order statistics refers to the process of finding the case smallest or case largest element in a list of n distinct numbers. For example, this can be involved identifying the smallest, the second smallest, largest, second largest, or the median, which is n over two, taking the flaws element of the list among other specific elements. Order statistics can be easily solved by sorting the list, which takes big O of n log n time using comparison-based sorting algorithms, such as merge sort, quick sort, with expected running time, or heap sort. Alternatively, it can be solved in big O of n time using linear time sorting algorithms, such as counting sort or bucket sort, provided the numbers meet certain conditions. For example, being integers or real numbers that are uniformly distributed, both within a specific and relatively small range compared to n. If we just need to find the smallest or the largest elements, then using the insertion sort technique, we can do so in big O of n time. So now let me take a closer look on this. Let's say I have a list uh, of n items and using uh, in the idea of insertion sort, we can find the smallest uh, in, in linear time. So that is considered one round. But if we want to find the second smallest, and then we get rid of the smallest, and for the remaining uh, list, which has n minus one items, then we can sort them. And we can find that second smallest. So in the remaining, uh, this will be the smallest in big O of n minus one time. So if we want to find or k smallest, or even we want to find uh, just the k smallest, we will still need to find the smallest and the second smallest, and so on, until we find the case smallest. So which will be in uh, n, big O of n, so uh, for each of them, so you got to add them up. So it's a big O of n minus k plus one. So you add them up, then it's going to be, uh, so again, so this is going to be k. You have a k of them. And then uh, for each column, you got two. Um, so essentially, this is what, uh, so what you're going to add up to. So this is 2n minus k plus 1 over two. So this is a big O of K M. Hi. And this is not linear. So now the question is, can order statistics be carried out in linear time for any inputs? So I just want to find the case smallest and K here is a parameter. And the answer is yes. The idea is to apply the divide and conquer approach similar to quick sort. 
but instead of recursively sorting both sublists, we only focus on the sublist that contains the case smallest element in each iteration. So now let me illustrate the idea. And here, let's say I have a list of n items. And using partition, let's say we uh, randomly select a pivot. And then we're gonna we're gonna get a partition like this. So this is a left sub uh, sub list, and this is the right sub list, and this is the pivot. Since we are looking for the case smallest, and if the size of the left sub list is k minus one, then this pivot is indeed the case smallest. Otherwise, for the size of the left sublist, it could be either greater than k minus one or smaller than k minus one. So if it's a greater than k minus one, then I know the k's smallest element will have to be in this sublist because it contains the case smallest here. Otherwise, I know the case smallest item will have to be in the right sublist. So in either case, I can drop the other sublist. For instance, in this case, I can drop this, drop the right sublist and the pivot. And if the uh, the second case will be the left sub, the number of items in the left sublist is less than k minus one. Then I know I can drop, I can drop the left sublist and the pivot, and focus on the right sublist. So somewhere here will be the k's smallest item, and this time instead of looking for the k smallest. I'm, I'm going to look for the k minus. Let's assume that I have, so the, the left sublist we, I drop is i minus one. And uh, so that will be i minus one plus one because I have a pivot. So instead of finding the k's smallest item in the right sublist, I'm going to find the k minus i's smallest, okay, item in the sub, uh, in the right sublist. So in other words, each time I'm going to drop roughly, right, so a half of those, hopefully, right, it's half of those, but there is no guarantee that we can always do so. So, uh, but we only need uh, uh, an eye in quick sort. We have to do recursion on both sublists. We only do a do recursion on one sublist, and we suspect that this will be uh, this will incur a expected linear time, and which is what we are going to do. Okay, and also this is uh, uh, this has a very straightforward Python implementation. Okay, so for that implementation, please refer to the code given in the week six module. So this gives us a fast and easy to implement implementation of order statistics. The following is an example. So this is an example. So let's say uh, I have a concrete list given. A is 
the list. So the elements here is a 205413. And suppose we're going to look for the third smallest number. And by just looking at this visually, we know that that number is two. Right, so uh, zero is the smallest, one is the second smallest, and two is the third smallest. So let's say uh, we follow the uh, the approach that using the the rightmost element as the pivot. Okay, so in this case, we're going to use three as a pivot. So what we're going to what we are going to do is to run through a partition. So let's just quickly go through this partition here. So there's a two, zero, five, four, one, three. So this is my partition. So three is the partition. And we're going to start I from uh, this location uh, from the leftmost and also J from the leftmost. So here, um, the item at this location, which uh, which is less than three, so which means that we are going to uh, move I up. And likewise, J will be the next one. And here zero is also less than three, so we're going to move I up, and J is now mo also move up to, to this location. And now this five is greater than three. So I stays, but J keep, is uh, moving. So J keeps moving, so now is a four, and it's greater than, four is greater than three, so I stays, and J keeps moving to uh, to this one, so to, to this element, so which is one. So one is less than three. So this time we are going to swap five with one. And what we are end up with is two, zero, five. And, oh, I'm sorry, this is two, zero, three, and then four, and then five. And this is the pivot. So partition st uh, stops here because uh, we have reached the end. And then I still point to, oh, uh, by the way, so when this is a swap, so I will move up. So I will move up here. Uh, anytime there is a swapping, at, uh, I is moving up. So which means now we're going to swap uh the element pointed by i and the pivot so what we are getting get, what we are now getting is the left sub array sub list is two zero uh, oh i'm sorry this is three is one okay so this is a one Because when we swap, so five goes to this location, one goes to a different, go to that location uh, where five was at. So this is a one. So now one comes in here. So what we get is a two, zero, one. And then the pivot and the right sub is a four, five. Uh no, uh it's it's a five four. Okay, four goes into in four and three is swap, so it's a five four. Okay, so that was this. Now we check. So the number of items in the left sub, uh, sub list is a three, so which means that the third smallest has to be in the left sub uh, list. So hence we're going to drop the pivot and also the right sub list. So then what we will do a partition is for this sub list. Again, we are using the rightmost. Um, element as the pivot. So let me remove the bracket here. So this is the pivot. 
And then we start from two, so I I starts from two, J from also starts from twos, two is greater than one. And then we move I up, and this time I um, and J also moves up. Sorry, only J moves up because there is no swapping. I doesn't move. Okay. J only J moves. Okay, so J moves up here. So this time um, the number at location J is less than the pivot. So we are going to swap it with, uh, with the number at location I. And that becomes zero, two, and then we move I up. So then J is uh, so now stops. So stops means that we're going to swap the item with uh, at location I with the pivot. So what we are getting now is 0, 1, and 2. And 1 is the pivot. So what we are getting is the following partition. Okay, so this is uh, 0, 1, 2. So then um, only two items here. That means the third smallest will have to be on the right sublist. And now the right sublist contains exactly one item. So the third smallest will be that item. And that is two. Okay, so this is the, um, the algorithm. So next we are going to show that this algorithm runs with an expected running time of big O of N when the pivot is selected uniformly at random from the current list for each, uh, for each partition. So in other words, for each partition, uh, we're going to randomly select, uh, randomly uh, and independently select a pivot element in that current list. Okay, so now let A consists of N distinct numbers and T of N be the random variable denoting the running time on a given value K. The reason this is a random variable because uh, we have, a, we have, we select uh, pivots uh, uniformly at random. So which means that each element in A will have an equal chance to be selected as a, uh, as a pivot. And then for each uh, pivot selected, and we are going to, uh, after partition, then we're going to have the following. Right, so this is A. We select X randomly somewhere. Select X as a pivot. And then after the partition, this is what we're going to get. Okay, so this is X. So they may not be exactly the same. Uh, so let, let me, let me, um, let me. Do all it again, so we know that they may not be the same, exactly the same thing. Okay, so the, in this case, I left separate. Let's say assuming it's a shorter. But then uh, for some i, so this is i minus one, and this is the pivot location, and here is n minus i. Uh, minus one plus one. So this is N minus I, many items. So this is one. So if you add them up, it's equal to N. So actually when this happens, this means that X is the I's smallest. So you randomly pick one and then this is going to happen. And we are going to use a random variable xi 
to denote the i's smallest number selected as a pivot. And also we are going to uh, uh, assign value for xi, so assign one to xi if i is not equal to k. Because if i is equal to k, then, uh, then we are done. So there is no more recursion. So no recursion uh, if i is equal to k. But if i is not equal to k, we're going to set it to 1 and 0 otherwise. So 0 otherwise, in this case, no recursion because the i smallest item is found. All right. Now, as uh, we said earlier, uh, each, um, each uh, item has an equal chance to be selected as a pivot, and that means that p of xi equals 1 is 1 over m. Hence, for each i, Okay, depending on which half, uh, which sublist we're going to go. And uh, and also the partition will take A times N times. So A here is, is some constant. And if I minus one, so in other words, the left sub list is greater than or equal to K, we're going to go to the left sub list. Otherwise, we go to the right sub list. So that is the um recurrence relation for um uh, this algorithm in terms of its running time however this is a kind of part to, to figure out a solution because um because each time you have you randomly select a pivot so uh, when you run it again it may be so so in other words uh when you run it first time and you, when you run it the second time, you may end up different partition. So that's one thing. We don't know where, which of these branch will happen and which one we're going to do. So in other words, we don't know that I. Uh, we don't know which pivot is selected. So in order to proceed with this calculation, uh, proceed with solving this recurrence relation, we are going to consider all possibilities of I, which then is the following. So uh, we consider all possibilities, so that means that when I from k plus 1 to n, so which satisfy this condition, it will go to the left sublist. Okay, so this xi uh, one of them will be selected. So we are, we consider all of them. So we add them up and we are taking the upper bound. So this is the upper bound. And for the, uh, when we take the right sub list, which means that when the left sub list is not big enough, then we go into here. So it's I from one to K. So once we have this, and it looks like that what we need to what we can do is to, uh, for this, we're going to add more terms. So let i from uh, from 1 instead of k plus 1. And likewise, we uh, let k be n. But then we are going to take which one is larger. OK, we're not going to take both, but we, make, we take the one that is larger. So that what is the max. And, so this is again is it is uh, upper bound. So once we have this, then eventually uh, this is uh, what we have. Okay, so write it. Next, we're going to find the expected value of E of N. So this will go in. So this will go into, so this go in inside of 
the, the summation symbol. So we're going to get i from 1 to n and e x i and t. So this is a max either i minus 1 or n minus i. Okay, and then plus E A N. And E A N here is just A N. So what we want to look at is this part. So now for this part, we notice that the uh, the value of X I depends on the pivot selection before partition uh, happens, right? So before the so for this current part, uh, this before this current partition, we're going to select a pivot. So that's what x i is. And then after you have a partition, and the value of t of this depends on the pivot selection after this partition. Hence, these two random variables are independent. Uh, uh, these pivots are selected. Um, independently at random. So they have no relations at all. Hence, they can then be, so E goes in here and also goes into the second part. So that's how we get this. Okay. Now, what we want to figure out is this portion of it. To do so, now let's get rid of this max sign. Uh, this is hard to deal with, so we want to get rid of it. So to get rid of it, we'll first we look at when uh, i is greater than n over 2 uh, ceiling, so this is equal to i minus 1 because n minus i is less than i minus 1 in that case. Otherwise, it will be equal to n minus i. So when i is less than or equal to this, then it will be n minus i. So what we're going to do here is that we'll see the, uh, the value of n minus i when i is less than or equal to n over 2 ceiling. So what it's going to be. So it's actually going to be that uh, I starts from not the ceiling, so the floor, up to n minus 1. So in other words, when I is equal to 1, obviously it will be less than n over 2. So it will be n minus 1. And then uh, so it's going to be um, well, actually it could still seal it, but yeah, because when i less than or equal to this, could still be sealing. But nevertheless, uh, we just add one more term, that will be fine, no problem. So that's not a big deal. Okay, so which means that this i from n over 2 roughly to n minus 1, so each of these, uh, so this then becomes t of i prime, which now i prime from n over 2 up to n minus 1. And this is uh, i minus 1. But then uh, you think of these uh, e i minus 1 is actually equals to i minus 1. OK, so hence, we're going to remove that minus one also, then we're going to say E of X I times E of T of I plus B N, and B here is a new constant depending on A because of this thing. So you're, 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 you, have, you have changed that A to B. Okay, so now this is uh, what we end up with. Now we're going to use this to show that there is another constant C such that for all n, the expected value of T of n is less than or equal to 
C times N for some C, and this is C we can choose. So what we're gonna choose is the, the one that's bigger than A times B. Now B, of course, we know what it is, and then greater than T of four, T of three, T of two, T of one, and so on. And, uh, and uh, we, so that we can, um, Actually, I think we could. Yeah, actually, we could uh, uh, change this a little bit. So I have changed it. So what we want to make here is that C is greater than or equal to A, B, and also greater than or equal to P of one, so that uh, we we want to make this is straightforward. So induction basis will just be T of one, T of one then is strictly less than C, so that is less than C times one, because N is equal to one, so this is straightforward. So now let's make a induction hypothesis. So we assume that for all I from one to less strictly, this is strictly less than n, we have e of t of k. That is less than or equal to ci. So what we're going to do now is to do an industrial step. We're going to do uh, e of t of n. And because we have this, and also in this time, this by hypothesis, induction hypothesis, this is less than or equal to C times I, and this uh, E of XI, so XI is equal to one with a probability, uh, so this is one over N, okay? So that, that hence we have, so this then, so let this, let's write one more step here. So this is a two times, I from n over two to n minus one. Uh, we take the four, and this is a ci times one over n. So c and n can move out. So this is then two c over n, and we are going to let i from one to n minus one. So this is um, i. And because I add these terms so that we can we can subtract the term. So this is subtract. So I then so from one to n over two minus one i. So that's is this part. And we copy B and down. So then uh, this part is equal to n. So this is equal to n times n minus one over two. And this part is equal to n over two times n over two minus one over two. And so this is a negative sign. So we make it bigger. So we, um, make it bigger so so in other words we we make it to n over two i'll make it smaller right because it's negative so we make it smaller so that will n over two minus one and here is n over two minus two so this is smaller than this so it's a negative so we have is a greater than or equal to sign and uh, we simplify this so now let me do the simplification here and uh, n times n minus one minus n over two minus one times n over two minus two, two. And then we have two C n. So this two will cancel, be canceled. And what we are having now is a C n. This is n squared minus n minus, okay? So this will be n squared over four and then minus, so this is two here, two there. So which will be minus n and then this is minus n over two 
And then this is two. Okay, so, so now we uh, sim keep simplifying it. So what we're getting is C of n. Now for the n squared term, we get n squared. So uh, this is a uh, three over four because this will become four, four, and then that that's what we have. And then for minus n, uh, as you can see here, this minus n, and this minus n, now remember there's a minus sign here, so that's canceled. But so that's what this term left, and this is minus, and that's minus, so we get plus. Okay, and then this minus, so we got minus two. And that's what this, this part is. Okay, so let me clean this up. All right, so now we uh, we write it in. So this go in there, so there's a three C N because there's an N here, so that we have only one N left. And then this go in there, so this N cancel. So we got C over two. And this is a minus two, so we get rid of it. So then we have a strictly less than N plus B N. So now, we can uh, extract Cn out, so 3Cn4, we get Cn, so which, which means that uh, we're going to, uh, so, so which means that we're going to get 1, Cn, Okay. And uh, so that's what's this part. And so so you so we put this two together, so we get B N. Uh, well, this is four, not eight. Okay, so that's four, so I change it to four. Uh, remember earlier we assumed that uh, C is greater than or equal to AB, so actually we can I made that to be greater than or equal to four B. So, uh, so because uh, C is greater than or equal to four B, so we know that CN four minus BN is greater than or equal to zero. Okay, so uh, because it's greater than or equal to zero, you subtract a item greater than or equal to zero. So this is going to be strict, I'm um, sorry, less than or equal to CN. Okay, so that is the proof. So uh, we have used mathematical induction to prove the expected running time of P e of N is linear. Okay, so now let's look at an exercise a problem. Suppose we want to find the smallest, the second smallest, all the way to the k's smallest items. So in other words, we want to find all k smallest items. Then using the naive insertion floor technique, k times can achieve this, but it incurs big O of k and time. Big O of uh, uh, parentheses K and parentheses time. Likewise, using the partition algorithm K times also results in an expected time of Big O of K N. Okay. Now someone claims that all K smallest numbers can all be found in a total of Big O of N plus K times log N time which is obviously much better than big O of Kn. Is this true? If so, explain how this can be done. All right, so this is the end of this video. Thank you for watching.